let's talk about number systems. So we live in a base 10 world. Why do you think that is? Probably because we have 10 fingers. Um, if we only had three fingers on each hand, like ET hands or something, maybe we would live in a base 6 number system. Um, the ancient Babylonians actually had a base 16 number system, and some people think that there were two tribes, and one of the groups had um, base 5 for the fingers on one hand, and the other group had a base 12 number system for the, the parts, um, basically count your knuckles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and um, they were combined somehow through a multiplication as these two groups traded. Um, the modern day clock is actually residual from the ancient Babylonian base 60 number system. Uh, so let's think about how our base 10 number system is constructed. So the decimal number system is base 10. Base 10 means that we have um, basically 10 building blocks from which we can construct every number. So those building blocks, as you know, are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, if we want to represent a number that's bigger than 9, but we only have these numerals at our disposal, what do we do? Well, we start over again at 0, but we put a 1 in front of it, and that becomes 10, which is the number that's 1 bigger than 9. We continue in this way, we reuse our 1, we reuse our 2, we reuse our 3, but with a 1 in front like this, making it 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on. Once we get here to 19, we do it again. We start over at 0, and this time we iterate the digit that's in the tens column. So this becomes 20, we reuse our 1, we reuse our 2, we reuse our 3, this becomes 21, 22, 23, and so on. So suppose that you lived in a culture that only used one hand to count instead of both hands. You would only have five unique digits. So let's look at how we would construct um, the base five number system. So in this case, our building blocks would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and that would be it. So we can count easily to 4, but how do we represent the number 5? Well, now we're out of digits, right, because we only have 5 unique numerals. So just like we did for decimal, we start over at 0, but we put a 1 in front. This seems kind of weird because this looks like 10, but what is this number in base 5? It's the number bigger than 4, so this is actually 5. That makes this 6, this is 7, this is 8, and this is 9. To represent 10 in a base 5 number system, since we're out of numerals, we start over again and then we iterate what's in the tens digit. So it looks like decimal 20 is actually in base 5 the number 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, and this is a base 5 number system. The number systems that we're going to discuss in this class um, are obviously decimal, which is base 10. We have a good intuitive sense for that because we've been living in a base 10 world our whole lives. The other one we're going to talk about is octal, and octal is a base 8 number system. And the next one is called hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is base 16. And the last one, the most important one that we'll discuss, is binary, which is base 2. So let me write these out for you um, so you can see them all together. So if I were to make a table, decimal, octal, hexadecimal, I'm going to abbreviate to hex, and binary numbers so that you could um, compare them all. 
decimal, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, start over, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Now in octal, since this is base eight, we only have eight unique numerals. So from zero to seven, this looks just like decimal because we have the same numerals. So now once we get to seven, right, since we have zero, we have eight unique numerals. We're out of numerals in an octal number system. So what do we do? Just like we did before, we have to start over at zero, but we put a one in front of it. So one zero that looks like 10 to us in decimal is actually eight in octal. And this is gonna continue one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, until we're out of numerals again. So these all have ones in front. And then once we get to seven, we have to start over and we put a two here. So that means that we can easily convert the two 12 in decimal is 14 in octal. 15 in decimal is 17 in octal. And it kind of makes sense, right, for these lower numbers because um, this, these numbers are two ahead of these numbers because we have two more numerals in decimal than we do in octal. Okay, so about how about hexadecimal? Hex is different because instead of having fewer building block block numerals. We actually have more in hex. Um, but how do we wrap our minds around that? Because in decimal, we don't have more. So let me just write this out. Eight, nine. That looks just like decimal, right? But we have some more building blocks in hex, and the way that we represent those is with letters. So 10 in hex is A, 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 is D, 14 is E, and 15 is F. So these are all of our primary building blocks. When we start over after F, we start over with a zero, and we put a one in front of it, and that's what gives us 16. So after we go from zero to 15, we have to start over with our numerals, and that's when we put a one in the tens place. Okay, so the last one, the most important one is um, for this class is binary. Binary is base two. So the only numerals we have are zero and one. And we're already out of numerals. So what did we do in the previous cases? We start over again with zero, but we put a one to the left of it, right? So it looks like one zero, it looks like 10 in decimal is actually two in binary. Okay, so we're gonna continue with the numerals that we have. After zero, we have one. There's still one in the tens place. And now we're all out of numerals again. We are at the highest numeral in the tens place. We're at the highest numeral in the ones place. So now we're going to reset these again to zero, zero. And now we shift a one over here. So four in decimal is one, zero, zero, and zero in binary. So it looks like 100. You guys might have seen um, a nerdy bumper sticker. It says there are um, 10 people in the world, people that understand pe binary and people that don't, right? So you know that actually this is 2 and not 10, but people that have no concept of that are going to think that that's decimal 10. So now you're privy to that bumper sticker. Next time you see it, you can chuckle. All right, so then um, we're going to continue on with the numerals we have. These ones stay the same because we're going to iterate in this ones place. Now we're adding numerals here again, so we're going to iterate over here and start over, and then we're going to iterate again. Now I'm all out of numerals, so these are going to reset to zero, and now I have a one over here in this um, fourth digit. So this is going to continue on, and as we go through this class, you'll probably get better at counting in binary. Um, but at least at first it helps to have these written out. Now all four of our digits are filled with ones, so we're going to reset them all to zero, and then we put a one in now this fifth digit to the
the left. And um, that is uh, the number systems that we're going to be discussing in this class. And next I'll show you how to convert between all the different number systems.